Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You already know what it is, what it do, what it is. It's the IVP show. It's the it's the IVP show. It's the IVP show with Dr. IBZ. It is the IVP show with Dr. IBZ. I'm rapping TDOT until I D-I-E. I'm doing me at East Africa's where I'm going to be. It's where I'm going to be. It's where I'm going to do me. It's where I'm going to rest my feet. It's where I'm going to chill on the beach on an island. Pass all this shit, motherfuckers whining. I need some space from all this shit because they whining. I need the dip from this place too much shit because they whining. They whining. All right. Episode. Motherfucking 186. Coming to you live from downtown Toronto. It is your boy, Dr. IBZ. We are back again. We are back at it again. And um, I've been working on my, uh, my my vocal tones a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I like the little raw and uncut voice that I kind of have on the mic. Um, I'm louder than I think I am. Most of the time, I'm like, am I really, like, do I really sound that loud? But then I look at the bars, and, like, when I talk... And I have my I have my mic at like negative five. I'm like, fam, I can put this shit on like negative nine. But then I have to do too much with the vocals and everything. So I'm like, you know what? I want y'all to hear me regardless. So how's everyone doing? How's everything going with everybody? I hope everyone's having an amazing time and an amazing weekend. Had an amazing weekend. It's the middle of the week. Um, we're going through... A lot of there's a lot of things going on in the news, right? And so, when it comes down to this like Israel and Palestine thing, right? I've been seeing a lot of things in terms of just propaganda, but I've been seeing a lot of fake propaganda, right? So the fake propaganda is kind of getting me to a point where it's like, okay, man, they're using here's the thing, they're using AI pictures. To promote propaganda. And back in the day, what they usually did was they made images for propaganda, right? So it's like fake images were like, it's not really a fake image, it's just a picture. And however you depict it is how you depict it. Now they're doing it with AI pictures. So now we're getting into a different type of realm where there's a lot of murky territory. A lot of celebrities, a lot of politicians, heck, even down to the ground level, employees are losing their jobs, their livelihood over this conflict. Now, I'm here to ask the question, was Kanye West right when he said, these niggas run everything, (laughs) they control every, my nigga, if you say anything against whatever the fuck, insert thing here you're automatically like you're losing your livelihood you're losing your job you're losing you're losing a lot of shit and there's a lot of people even at work when i'm at work one of my niggas came up to me on some like yo man i support the muslims da 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 i told that nigga yo shh don't talk to me about that these topics i need this money right now that's one Two, you don't know who's listening. Now, the one thing that everybody needs to understand is when you work in a, an establishment, you work in a business, political views are not the best way to go. If you have any type of political view, you keep that to yourself. If someone says it, they say it. And you kind of like, oh, you know, I can see what you're saying. Or you could be like, you know, I agree with that, Right. But you're not going to get in trouble for agreeing with whatever the person said. You will get in trouble for bringing it up in the first place. That is the key. So, I've been seeing a lot of people getting their, like, everything getting taken away. And then I'm just like, yo, was Kanye right? And then I'm dialing it back and I'm trying to look back into, like, 
everything. And I'm just like, okay. On the surface level, everyone's saying, bruh, it's effed up on both sides. Even though one side is getting way more demolished than the other side, it's still effed up on both sides. So at least the citizens have level-headed thinking that are that citizens slash people that are in in there to have competence and intellectual thinking are like okay they're not ignorant they're going okay this is fucked up for all of us so the world is talking about this whole thing about like let's do a ceasefire then i'm like okay that's that's the best thing to do you guys figure something out politically something out just figure something out however it's not like that it's not going to be like that in terms of there's too much bloodshed so i can understand why it every both sides are hesitant for the ceasefire because one side could just start shooting out of nowhere you know what i mean so i completely understand that I also like so Bella Hadid is one of the I don't know she I think she's like a Dior like ambassador or something she got dropped but she's Palestinian you know what I mean and she has ties to that country so she's supporting her people that's like let's put it like this guys I'm Tanzanian imagine if some conflict was happening between Kenya and Tanzania and I'm supporting Tanzania, and everyone knows I'm Tanzanian. And let's say I lose sponsorships because the majority of who is being supported is Kenya. No one's really supporting Tanzania. Tanzania is looked as terrorists. Kenya is looked as, oh no, they're defending themselves, right? Even though, right? Right? Read, read in between the lines, right? So you see me supporting Tanzania. Then all, and everyone knows I'm Tanzanian, and everyone knows I'm going to support Tanzania. And I'm going to be vocal about it, especially if I'm high status like her. You mean to tell me that the moment I say something, the moment I stand up for my people, and I'm not even talking shit about my company, but even though my company is aligned with Kenya, now I get dropped from the company, I lose... I lose all I lose a bunch of sponsorships and everything. That is fucking weird, right? There's a politician. She all of a sudden got voted out to be censored. I did not know you could censor politicians. She got voted to be censored over this conflict, but there's so many other conflicts where people weren't censored and there was a lot of lies that were being said. So that's why I'm really on the what is going on because here's my angle. Something fishy is going on, right? Innocent lives are being killed on both sides. And it's, I, yo, I don't give a fuck what anyone has to say, bro. People are dying. I don't care. People are dying. So the end of the day, this whole conflict needs to stop. It needs to stop, period, because people are dying. Down to the Ukraine shit, too. People are dying. It needs to stop. I don't understand why the Ukrainian president is going online saying we're losing media coverage because of the other conflict. Brother, can I tell you one thing? This is not a popularity contest. If I was in the Ukraine and my commander-in-chief, and I'm fighting for my life, my commander-in-chief is worried about the media coverage that we're getting and is worried about how... Uh, the other conflict is getting more footage than our conflict and all this other shit. Brother, focused on winning the fucking war. We're sending you money. Not we, but governments are sending you money. Now this guy's going, can you give us credit now? We'll pay you back. Give us credit. Brother, you got billions of dollars. What did you do with it? There's that little hoax that happened that I reported on, too. Like, I'm trying to really understand this. And I'm hearing there's a little conspiracy theory, this is allegedly, where there's like a tie-in between Russia and Ukraine. 
There's a little tie-in. So, th- like, it's this war is beneficial for both countries type shit. Because even if that country gets occupied, nothing's really going to happen to that country in terms of they're just going to be a part of, right? So, I'm really trying to understand what are you doing? People are fighting their for their lives and you're on the media. You wanna be you wanna be in the Oscars, you wanna be all up in the you wanna be clout chasing out here, ina ina and everything, mixy mixy. And brother, your country's going through it. So that's why I don't understand it, right? And then you go back to this shit, which is even worse because now it's spilling. To where I live. It's spilling to where I'm around. Where now you see both, well, not both sides because there's not really like Palestinian, like, my bad. No, ah. <laughs> I'm have to, I'm not even going to mute that word, but you, you know what I mean. There's not really like Palestinian, mem- like, Things out there in terms of where people can vandalize. There's a lot of brewish things that you can vandalize. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of that shit happening. There's a lot of people unaliving each other. Whether you're on this side or you're on that side. A, a little a little maskeen child died. It does not matter whether that child... And I'm not going to say what side that child was on or where that child was from. Because a child got stabbed over the shit. A teacher that was just eating her lunch, chilling, got stabbed over this shit. A guy that went to the protest just to just to be like, nah, I'm against this. He got stabbed over this shit. Like, so many people are dying. It's trickling down over here now. People are... So, when the nigga from Brew Crane is, is the president, he's complaining about what's going on and saying that, oh, we're losing coverage. It's because this shit is trickling down to every other country. Everyone is debating about this because everyone knows someone that could be affiliated, that could be affected, that could feel it. That's why this shit is way bigger than what's going on in Russia and Brew Crane. So, I'm sick and tired of presidents doing that. Like, yo, we like we yo, we feel bad for you. We send how much money did we send, man? Billions of dollars we're sending. And you're still out here saying, no, we're not getting enough coverage and footage. Yo, we still insert you in the news. You should be lucky you're getting that with all the bullshit that's going on right now. So and honestly. With that war, hopefully, whoever's on the whoever's on the right in the right wins, and whoever's in the wrong loses. And then hopefully, less bodies are being um, unalived, and people can, you know what I'm saying? People just because we're getting to a point where it's just. I'm when I say people could just people could just, you know, chill. But right now. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. I don't want to be that guy. But there's something going on. Okay? There is something going on, my brothers and sisters. Right? And when I say there's something going on, people need to understand that. This is not just about, like, religion. This is not just about... Um, status or this is not just about what you, how you feel. I'm telling you guys, there's something that's going to happen soon, that's going to be big. They prepped us with the with the pandemic because they're like, yo, let's give them something massive, catastrophic, and let's see what happens. Let's see how they handle it. They gave us the pandemic. Boom, pandemic's over. Now everyone's back to normal. Now they know we can hit them with something, and everyone's gonna just gonna fall in line. Because that's exactly what happened. It went from conspiracy theorists being against the government to saying, well, isn't the government helping us? Then it? That's what it went into. So it's like, oh, you guys actually do need us. So you guys are just talking shit. I bet when the next thing happens, we already know we got you by the fucking balls. 
not to be conspiracy theorists, I'm just throwing shit at the wall, right? So, there's those conflicts that are happening are very fucking unfortunate. And condolences to everybody that's going through it and thoughts and prayers like literally like I'm not I'm not even trying to be like a dick by, by saying thoughts and prayers and condolences but there's nothing more I could say right there's more, nothing more we can do things are fucked out here and then the economy is not helping the economy is at an all time low where everyone is losing fucking money man crazy so that's a lot that's that was a little like thing that we like people need to really understand so I had to let like you know I had to let people know for a quick second so now what we're gonna do is okay this type of podcast for today is gonna be the type of pod where the most I'm gonna do in terms of I'm trying I'm gonna try not to like be too what's the word safe. Even though you guys know that like I I'll 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 speak the way I wanna speak, but now it's time to be a little bit more blunt in what I'm what I'm saying. Right? And when I say read in between the lines, like earlier, I want you to actually dissect what I'm saying and read in between the lines because sometimes being too blunt can fuck shit up, right? So for now, we're going to go into some good news. My nigga, I've been waiting for this announcement since I was in high school. I'm almost 30 years old. I am almost 30 years old, my nigga. I had been through a lot of bullshit. I bought this game three times, GTA 5. I bought the PS4 3 version, PS4 version, PS5 version. They are finally releasing the GTA 6 trailer, and they announced it. So GTA 6 is coming out, and they're announcing the trailer. So the game might not be coming out till late 2025 or 20, early 2026. Hundo P. It's not coming out anytime soon. Like, niggas got to wait an extra year, I'm telling you. This game is going to define... Is going to pivot gaming from now until the end of time. The reason why I'm saying this is because this is going to be the most anticipated game. So this is going to be, if this game goes well, studios are... So let's put it like this. This game is going to be heavily criticized by everybody. Even people that don't play video games are going to be criticizing this game. Even people that don't know about this game are going to know about this game. It's going to be one of those games. It's going to be like GTA 5 where everyone's going to buy it. If you're not even a gamer, you're going to buy a system and you're going to buy, buy it just to play it. You know what I mean? That is the type of game that GTA is. I've done it. When GTA 5 came out, I didn't have a system. I said, fuck this. I bought a PS3 and I bought GTA 5 all in one day. So it cost me like about $200 at the time. So, and at the time, your games were so much more cheaper. They were like $50, $60 like in terms of like, you know what I mean? Now they're like seven. Uh, now you're spending like 80 bucks, And then if you want the like nice version, you're spending like a bill, bill 20. But yeah. So the fact that GTA 6 is coming out, that is excellent. I like it. I fuck with it. And hopefully... Now, what I feel like is going to happen is they're going to have to tie in GTA Online. So I think this is what they're going to do. They're going to probably have a feature where you can take your GTA Online character in 5 and you can take him to 6. Then you can take him from six back to five. That type of shit. And I'm pretty sure, pretty sure what they're going to do is, is that <clears throat> not only can you transfer players, but let's say a play, the player in Vice City 
could affect the player online in fucking Los Santos. You know what I'm saying? In terms of GTA 5 and GTA 6. I think they're going to try to tie that shit in together, is what I'm saying. Because they ha- still have to make GTA 5's online still... Because GTA 5 online has a cult following, so people are going to still be playing that t- years on to come. So you have to make people hop off of GTA 5 online and make it worthy for GTA 6 online. How can you do that? By tying them both together. If you tie them both together... People are going to be like, well, okay, the more money I make on Vice City, I can transfer that to... You know what I'm saying? You can do that type of shit. Or your character can go from city to city. I mean, uh, state to state. But it's more like you have to have... So it'd be like this. I think it would be like this. You take the... So GTA Five would have like a, a, a thing where you download... I don't know, man. I don't even know how they could connect it, though. How can you connect both games? You know what I mean? Because, like, think about it. How could you do it? Like, in the comment section, like, right now we're brainstorming out here, right? I'm excited that this game's coming out. Yo, to all the people that have passed away that are waiting for this game, I'm going to play this game for you. So, I'm telling Asafrullah, but I'm saying this. Um... They could honestly be like, okay, if you have a GTA 5 save file, right, then you can automatically get whatever the fuck you can unlock. Because I know you can do some shit like that. But they have to be able to make in GTA 5 where you can download your player, transfer your player to maybe the social club, right, because they have the social club shit. Transfer your player, they'll have a feature where you can transfer them to the social club, and then from the social club, you can transfer them to Vice City, and it'll still be the same, but it couldn't, can't be the same person, because the model's different. It's a 10-year-old game. So you would have to make GTA 6 online not similar, but way better than than GTA 5 online, and how can you do that? Because they've been milking GTA 5 online. That's what I'm... I'm trying to wonder, where are they gonna go with GTA 6 online? Because they're gonna have multiplayer on it. And I'm pretty sure, maybe, in the GTA 6, they're gonna focus mostly on the story. So the DLC is gonna be the story and all that type of shit. And they're going to have a multiplayer aspect. But I think what they're going to work on is what, how, the, how are they going to implement that multiplayer aspect? You know what I mean? Are they going to do it like Red Dead Redemption um, Online? And then that's why they stopped Red Dead Redemption Online. Because the shit that they were going to add on to Red Dead Redemption Online, they're like, yo, we can add that to GTA 6 Online. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see what happens. So, if this game is shit, though, I'm going to be so mad, though. I'm going to be like, come on. Oh, hell no. So, um, what I'm going to do is, for now, I guess, I guess, we're going to talk about some other shit now. So, Kai Sinat did this whole going to jail thing and like people are trying to like get at him i don't know if i talked about this in the last part or not but i want to like talk about this quick kai Sinat is doing this thing right and i can understand why there's people pissed off at him and people are saying like yo man he's promoting the prison system and all this type of shit hey yo people And, like, when I say this, I mean, like, people need to really understand one thing. What Kai Sinat is doing, he's doing it for money, right? Clearly. No shit, Sherlock. He's entertaining the youth. When you have a fan base that's mostly, like, younger people... And you want to do certain things. It's very fucking hard. Like, Kai Sinat right now 
he's at a point where like in like five years he's gonna lose a bunch of fans because he's gonna get way too mature to try to entertain children he's gonna be like yo fuck that i mean hey yo, if you fuck with me if you don't you don't because entertaining children your whole life you i'm talking about just your whole life it gets exhausting because you're putting on a front when you're when you're here's here's the thing that i've always noticed people that 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 their fan base is mostly children teens and shit like that they tend to have the reason why their scandals hit harder or when something happens people are like yo what the fuck da 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 is because nigga you're not being yourself the whole time you're being a certain version of yourself but you're not being the actual you so when some shit happens and some shit transpires guess what people are like oh my god you did that oh my god nigga he's human so when you are doing shit like that then you start live streaming and you're doing the pri- I'm in the prison da 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 People are going to get mad. Now, if your audience was people that are like my age and shit, no one would get mad. They'd find it funny. They'd be like, ah, whatever. Right? Because you only influence niggas our age. And if you're a nigga our age thinking that jail is cool, you're fucking stupid. So, regardless, like, you're in the clear. But the fact that you can influence younger people is the fact that people are pissed off. They're like, yo, why is he promoting jail and making it look cool and blah, blah, blah. Now the young people are going to think it's cool. And and I can understand that because some people are actually going to be like, you know what, Kaisen, I went to jail. I can go to jail, right? But at the end of the day, you cannot blame this brother for doing a funny skit. You know what I mean? It's funny. It's funny. So, um... Like, there's just, like, this is funny clips, right? Like, I can just look up Kai Sinat right now, right? And then jail stream. And then, like, you can just find funny clips, okay? Um, there's Drewski in there. There's, there's, um, Krishan Rock in there. You know what I mean? Like, Krishan Rock's in there. And, like, it's just, it's just, like, I don't even know what to tell y'all, you know what I mean? Trust me! Oh my god! Oh, that's Kishan, that's Kishan! Oh, yeah, that's Kishan walking in, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, I'm gonna take a piss while y'all listen to this. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 that's Kishan! Protect the wall! Protect the wall! Here's one thing you need to do before buying anything online. Don't spend another dime on Amazon until you watch this first. Watch Amazon. this. I can show you how to get the sweetest deals like, online when you oh, shop wait, from wait, major wait, wait, retailers like Amazon Why is and Target. Ad? <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that. Yo. But yeah, Krishan's in there. <clears throat> Yo, why the fuck? Hold on, Kai's in that live. Why would you place an ad that fucking close in the video? You should have just placed it in the beginning then at this point. There's an ad in the beginning of the video. Ad, quick 50 seconds in the video, bro. Like, come on, man. Like, huh? What are you trying to, trying to cheese me for? Anyways, so. That's about it for, um, oh, not for this topic. We're going to keep going in. Everyone's mad that he's exploiting the prison system. I feel like. If you went to jail, you're going to get mad at this. If you haven't been to jail, you're going to be like, oh, this is just entertainment. But then it's like, you have to be consistent with what you're mad at because then you have to be mad at hip-hop. 
movies that depict jail. What else? You have to be mad at everything. So the fact that you have to be mad at so many things just to even have the integrity to be mad at this, it just shows like, yo, you can't, yo, people like to pick and choose. The one thing that I hate is people that be picking and choosing because I am consistent, very fucking consistent with where I stand in everything. I don't budge. I don't move unless I get new information. Then I can make my own assessment, make my own logic, and then add to it. But other than that, I move the way I, I need to move the way I want to move. Because you cannot tell me how the fuck I need to think. Because there's a lot of you motherfuckers that don't know shit about nothing. But y'all be acting like y'all do. So, the fact that people are trying to say that he's depicting jail in a in a certain way where he's trying to highlight like it's positive i can understand it as we're going to go back to the first part because of his fan base however we can't get mad at a nigga for being creative and making some funny shit happen the fact that people are getting mad at it because they feel like he's whatever There's one thing that you niggas need to know. A lot of people, and this is going to be a very hot take, but there's a lot of people, a lot of y'all, that know the risks you're taking when you get involved in the streets, man. Period. So if you go to jail, right, there's a lot of movies, there's a lot of TV shows where they depict jail in a certain way too. Mayor is a mayor of Kingstown. Um, what else is there? There's so many. So it's like, but y'all niggas will watch that and be like, <clears throat> so some people's point was, okay, why didn't you guys get real people from that, that that are from prison or just came from prison? Why don't you guys get real actors like that in there? I don't know if they did or not, but bruh, are they going to get real felons to, to do certain acting jobs in, in a prison? Sometimes they do if the director's creative. Sometimes they fucking don't. So when people have a gripe with fucking Kai Sinat about what he's doing, I'm just literally like, you niggas are just mad, yo. Just mad. Leave Kai Sinat alone. Is what I'm saying. So. Like just think of it. What's the point? Now. We're going to get to a little intermission time. Right? A little intermission. Now during this intermission. This is just a new thing I'm going to try. try. I don't know. I'm going to try something. It's a new segment. It's going to be called What and Why. No, it's going to be called Why. It's going to be called, I don't even know what it's going to be called, but we got our friend, El Diablo, back in the building. So glad to be back, Eeps. How you doing? How are you doing? I'm back in this bitch. What's up? What's up? What are you going to talk to me about? So, this one girl... Mm-hmm. Take this in. All right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill. All right, all right. So, watch this. This one girl, right? She made pasta. Okay. Yeah, it's normal, right? Okay. She made pasta. And then, you know when you make pasta, you have to strain it, right? He's, okay. She strained it with her panties. <laughs> What's wrong, El Diablo? <laughs> Why the fuck would you do that with pasta? I'm a dog. I eat ass. 
but I will never eat Pum Pum Party Pasta. Damn, you made El Diablo bring out his Jamaican accent and he left the building. Like, he's done. He's gone. Pum Pum Panty Pasta is what I'm probably going to call this podcast. <laughs> pum Pum Panty Pasta. 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 Pum Pum Panty. Hold on, hold on. You ready? You ready? Hold on, hold on. Nah, nigga. Nah, nah. We gotta, we gotta, we're leaning into this. You know what I'm saying? You guys ready? So, what happens when, hold on, nah, 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 nah. Let me get my shades. Let me get my shades. Let me get my DJ shades. What you know about that poom poom pasta? Poom poom pasta. That poom poom pasta. Poom poom panty pasta. Poom poom panty pasta. Poom poom panty. Poom 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 panty pasta. Poom poom panty pasta. Poom 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 panty pasta. Come on. How about this one? Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Panty. Panty. <laughs> boom, boom. Patty. Pasta. She took the pasta. Strained it in her panty. Strained the panty. Strained the pasta with her panty. Is that your auntie? Is that your auntie? Stream pasta with panty? Is that your auntie? Stream pasta with panty? Hey, is that your auntie? Hey, stream pasta with panty? Hey, is that your auntie? Hey, stream pasta with panty? Hey. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck, I need to clip that. I'm definitely clipping that. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> I love unlicensed music. If it, when you know when you know how to fuck around with it, it's proper. Now, comment below. Would you eat some pum pum panty pasta? And would you call it like mamma mia? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm a tired. Why are you giving me this? You're like, what the fuck? Is... Bruh. And here's the thing redacted w- woman made it. Oh, I've been learning how to use the word redacted. I just say it even in mid sentence, even though it's something that you're supposed to like write. I don't give a fuck. Redacted woman made it. Nigga. Who wants your coochie juices soaked in the pasta? I am just trying to eat. I know, I know flavor. I know how it is with Flavor Town. I know how it goes. But what are we doing here? Huh? Hmm? It's disgusting. Anyways. So. We got more topics to discuss. To discuss. So, um, if we're going to go into, like, podcast update news, like, podcast wars update news, not podcast wars, but, yeah, fuck it, podcast wars, right? So, you got the Need to Know podcast, Rory and Maul pod, new Rory and Maul, and then you have new Joe Budden, you have them niggas, right? All three of these podcasts are a spawn of the Joe Budden podcast under that umbrella, if you want to think about it, right? Now, Joe Budden went recently on the uh, Need to Know podcast, was talking about the secret meeting. The one thing that I tuned into was that Rory and Maul weren't really mad at anything that Joe said because they already know Joe's just going to get his shit off. 
They were more mad at Savon and Alex. I did not know Alex was screen man the whole time. But anyways, they're mad at Alex and screen. Well, I can't call him screen man because I'm not cool with him like that. But they're mad at Alex and Savon because Alex said that Maul and Rory came up to us and saying that the workflow is shifting and we're overworking, underpaid, that type of shit, right? They heard the word overworked, underpaid, that sentence, and they went, nigga, no, we never said that, right? So I can understand both sides. Now, the whole thing that really gets to me is, everyone here is in the wrong. And let me tell you why everyone here is in the wrong. Savon even said in his response that he still fucks with, with Rory, but he still fucks with Joe. Them two ain't fucking with each other. Now, I'm not going to... What's the word again I'm going to say? When two niggas ain't fucking with each other, and let's say you're cool with both of them, you can only chill with one of those niggas. The other nigga will know that, yeah, and it's whatever nigga you have the most history with and you're most closer to. You chill with that nigga. Then, you don't chill with the other nigga. And the other nigga should not be hitting you up to chill as well. He knows you're on that side, but he knows that you're cool and he knows, yo, I still fuck with you. I just don't fuck with who's with that that nigga with you. I've been through that situation where I've been caught in the middle. Two niggas is beefing, and I'm not taking any side. I'm staying in the middle. Why? I fuck with both of them. But you did not see me. Chilling with one other person because the uh, I was already closer to the other person. So even though I'm closer to the other person, I let the other person know, Ayo, you and that person are beefing? There's no bloodshed or anything? Yeah, no? Okay, cool. Hey, I'm not involved. And I'm still, if that nigga comes and talks to me and like says, like, says, like me and him talk and have a conversation, it's all going to be love. You guys are beefing over some bullshit. You get me? So, there's no bloodshed. No, nothing happened. Ma, Rory, Joe, Joe Budden, Savon, y'all niggas are going back and forth over some bullshit at the end of the day. So, Savon was like, I'm not picking sides. I still, I'm still going to fuck with Joe, and I'm still going to fuck with Rory and Ma. But then, that backfires when you do a podcast with Joe. And then Joe's gonna. Joe has poison in his fucking. in his voice. In terms of. Joe knows what the fuck he can say, what the fuck he can do to say something that's gonna spark them two niggas to have an emotional response. Because he knows them niggas. So he did most of that shit on purpose. There's a secret meeting. Joe knows it wasn't a secret meeting. He just cut, and the niggas just talked about him when he cut. He knows it wasn't a fucking secret meeting. He also knows, like, the fact that fucking Savon respects him more than he respects them. So he knows he can use that as leverage as well. But the only thing was, was that Maul was being disrespectful. Rory was like, nah, we weren't saying we were un overworked or underpaid. And then Savon was like, nigga, I never said that, that you were saying that. Alex was the one that said it. Alex never owned up to it. Alex, in the response video that I watched for an hour, Alex just said, I didn't say it properly. But you nigga, you need to own up to it. He did own up to it, but you need to say, yo, my bad if y'all heard me differently, but this is what I meant. Just clarify. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole thing in terms of like the whole hour. I'm like at 45 minutes type shit for like 30, 35 minutes, not to cap, 35 minutes. And I didn't hear it. He kept 
saying like yo it's just how you say it da, da, da. but i never heard him to go you know what i was wrong with what i said in terms of them saying that they're overworked and underpaid because it wasn't them that said it we felt that way da, 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 da. that was it see was like hey yo from the jump i said it was me so the whole beef is kind of stupid and not beef but the whole back and forth is stupid rory and molly just said they're not trying to look they are very sensitive of the fact that they don't want to look like they don't want to work because they have sponsors, they have investors, and they're actually putting in work into their podcast. So they don't want to look like we're not fucking putting in work, we're not doing numbers, we're not making money out here. We don't want to fucking hear it. So when niggas start pulling up to certain podcasts and being like, man, these niggas are saying they're overworked and underpaid and shit, these niggas are going to get mad, especially when they've actually helped you out in your career. I can understand where Rory and Maul are coming from. And I can also understand where Savon and them are coming from in terms of their response. You niggas need to sit down and have a conversation and also have, have fucking someone that you guys respect so that when shit gets out of line and he goes, yo, chill, niggas will chill. That... Sit down, speak, talk, get your shit off, and then every man can go home after. Because what you guys are doing right now, it's, we're going to go tit for tat, tit for tat, and it's not helping anybody. Joe said what he said, he doesn't give a fuck. He still fucks with Rory, he just doesn't fuck with Maul. Everyone else, right now... The way what it's looking is, everyone still fucks with Rory. Everyone's still like, yo, we still fuck with Rory. But everyone's looking at Maul weird. And when Maul, with that clip of Maul saying, yo, me standing on business, I'm looking back like, yo, did I make the right decision? That right there, when he said that, that made me go, oh, I fucking get it. I get it. Nigga, pull it up. Pull up the clip, nigga. I'm not a journalist, so I'm not going to fucking pull up the clip and fucking show you guys. If I can find it, I'll find it in the editing process. But just know, this nigga Maul said that out loud, meaning that in his mind, he's thinking that if I chilled that day instead of so when, when when Joe told Rory not to come in, if I should have called him out on the podcast and made it a thing on the podcast, and then everyone's going to be like, yo, hashtag bring back Rory, and then Rory comes back, and then the pod's back in order, and then niggas can go behind the scenes and actually talk, and oh, that's what's going on? Okay, okay, okay. But that didn't happen. Instead, I think that, I think that was Joe's plan. Joe's plan was, so, my whole conspiracy theory about this whole thing, right, and I'm going to get off this topic very soon, but my whole conspiracy theory about this whole thing was that Joe Budden initially thought that Maul was going to be with him, and Rory was going to be the fucking angry one, but instead it's the opposite, which is fucking hilarious. Rory's the one that's level-headed and objective, and Maul's the one that's like, nah, fuck this nigga. So when, so, so when Joe Budden told Rory to go stay home, Joe Budden thought Ma was going to be like, you know what, Rory? Yeah, you should stay home. You should chill for a bit. And then they're just going to pod for one, two episodes. And then Rory comes back. And then everything's okay or everything's back in order. But at least these niggas talk behind the scenes. Instead, Ma said, nah, fuck that. Rory should be pulling up. Why are you telling him not to pull up? He's a part of this too. And da 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 da. Yes, he is a part of it. And then accounting, this. Everything started leaking, basically, after that. Because, bro, Maul, we get it. You help build the podcast. Next contract, talk to the nigga and tell him, yo, I want bonuses and royalties, or I want some type of royalty or something, where if we make this much money, I want this much, like a percentage of that. Joe would have gave it to you. You and Rory, you would have got it. I'm pretty sure Parks is getting that right now. So when when you 
jump out the gate and try to be, I'm a real nigga, da 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 it kind of backfired, didn't it? And you're realizing that it backfired because you could have been in the same position that you're in, maybe way more fans, way more people, maybe way more viewership, and all you had to do was just side with Joe just for a bit and be like, yo, Rory, you know what? Just chill for a bit. We won't talk later. That's it. But niggas, niggas go nick. So we off that topic anyways. That's just a little podcast dumb shit. Anyways, um, we got YSL and Soldier Boy. So YSL, this YSL trial is going on right now, and uh, the niggas pissed. The evidence is not. The prosecutors are withholding evidence to the trial, so the judge is cheesed. So the prosecutors are trying to get rid of some evidence. And now, so before I thought the judge was feeling himself, being like, yo, it's a high-profile kid. Now the judge is tired. He wants to get this shit over with. And the prosecutors are the ones that keep stretching this case out. They're withholding evidence. The judge is like, hey, yo, if you're going to withhold this evidence, I'm going to throw out a bunch of other shit, like, or throw out that evidence. Like, the judge is not playing. So the one thing that I want to say to everybody, okay, I'm going to say this a bunch of times, okay, because I love everybody. I love you, all right? I love you guys. This type of fucking rhetoric, right, I think I just killed the fly. But this type of rhetoric needs to stop. You guys need to understand one thing. Prosecutions and prosecutors, they have a tendency to withhold information and evidence that could help the defense and that could ruin their case because prosecutors are supposed to have that success rate, right? The one thing that people don't understand is, is that <clears throat> always try to prove your case. Always try to have as much evidence as you can when you have to prove your case because people will twist it no matter what. I feel like Young Thug is going to get out, but he just had to go through this bullshit as an example so other rappers will fucking chill the fuck out. Or he'll do some time, not a lot, and then come out. So, that's just how I think of it, but I don't know. Just, I don't know. Free Thug, free all, free, free fucking wife and Lucci, free everybody, man. Ralu just came out of prison, by the way, guys. So, Ralu came out of prison. Now we're going to give him a round of applause. Assalamu alaikum, Ralu. Rallo's out of prison, so shout out to him. We're just going to give him a quick shout out. Shout out to Rallo, you're out of prison, you know what I'm saying? Um, Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy. Nicki Minaj had to let you know about some real shit. And let's, let's, let me just play this because end of the day, man, Yo, bruh, the one thing that pisses me off about people, man, is the fact that, okay, Soldier Boy, whenever you mention his name, this nigga is so insecure. So, I never, I never heard of an insecure nigga like Soldier Boy. 
Yeah, I know I'm looking down right now. Sorry, guys. But yeah, Soldier Boy. Insecure ass nigga. So what you was mad at today? Who you mad at today? I ain't mad at nobody. It's just the fact that J. Cole, why is you going on a podcast talking about you don't like my music? Who who cares what you like, fam? Babe. You know what I'm saying? Babe, I, babe, he never said that, babe. What did babe? What did what did he say? He said that, that he said that he what he had to keep it real with himself and admit that. People like you are are what was really like keeping the wave going and like really bringing the energy. And some people, and he didn't want to really say that to certain people or admit that he admit that or he he basically gave you props like yo people like you. So what the fuck was you on when you misinterpreted it and now you sitting here doing the most again? I'm I don't know, man. I guess so. I'm gonna go with y'all. If Nikki, that's the last person that snapped it. Nikki say I heard it wrong. I heard what I heard, but all right, cool. He's not even that. He don't even strike me. Yo, Nikki Minaj. As much as people might might hate on her. There's something about Nikki Minaj. I don't know what it is, yo. That I'm like, yo, she's she's actually a real one. Like, there's even a clip of Meek Mill saying, like, Nicki Minaj was trying to get him off probation. I'm just like, Nicki Minaj is a real one. So I feel like... Soldier Boy. And we're going to end this podcast on this topic. Soldier Boy, brother. You need to stop being insecure. When people comment about you and talk about you, nigga, literally during the era when hip hop was shit, who is the one person that prevailed, that still made money, but no lyrics at all? Was you. You were the mumble rap of that time. Soldier Boy. You were the mumble rap of 05. Soldier Boy was the mumble rap of 05. So for you to think that, oh no, why are people commenting on me and da 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 and talking about me, nigga? Because you were one of those artists that everyone was like, who the fuck is this nigga? This nigga shit. Nigga, I was alive when you were. Yo, your come up, I was there. I seen it. I seen the whole co- Soldier Boy come up. So when people say like, yo, you're not a lyricist. You, people are just saying, yo, you're not a lyricist. You, not, I never heard people say, yo, Soldier Boy makes shit music. People just say Soldier Boy is not a lyricist. That's not that's not hip hop or hip hop died or da da da. Because you're not really rapping, rapping. That's why. But then Trinidad James's and all them other people came through too. But then before you, there's also MC Hammer got the same flack. Y'all remember MC Hammer? He got the same fucking flack. I know y'all remember that. So that's really how it goes. <laughs> that's really how it goes. So guys, we're gonna really end it off on one of these topics. Um, right now because the camera is dying as well so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna end it off on a quick freestyle till the camera dies I guess you guys ready no I'm not ending it soldier boy stop being a fucking emotional ass nigga nigga we respect you in the hip hop community. Stop being fucking emotional. You've been killing shit. You've been murdering shit. You've been doing your thing. Stop fucking being emotional when people discuss you in interviews and shit. You are a legend. Stop fucking getting emotional. People are going to discuss you. Stop it. This nigga just keeps getting hurt and pussy hurt and pussy hurt. Sand in his pussy. Fam, you're a man. Someone talks about you, observe it, and make a record then, nigga. Rap! 
Fucking rap, soldier boy. You keep talking about your accolades and shit. Rap then, nigga. Show you can niggas that you can rap with on par with uh, fucking J. Cole. Or you can drop a record where niggas would be like, oh shit, J. Cole, you gotta see something. Why'd you do that? If you're a real hip hop artist. Real rap, real hip hop is what I'm talking about. And if you ain't about that, nigga, then whatever. So we're done with it. This is the end of the podcast. All right, so we're good. We're done. Coming to you live from downtown Toronto. Yep.